This video is sponsored by Raycon. So I recently discovered that I am quickly running out of space for all of this manga. Shelves are bending and this thing could crumble at any second. Basically, I need space, but it got me wondering. I've got a lot of manga, many of you don't know what series I own or what I have yet to read, and given I'm in need of a new series to review, I want you guys to choose. So basically, if you see a series you'd like me to cover in my collection today, leave your vote in the comments down below, but remember, you can only choose one. This is your chance to have your voice heard and have your favorite manga reviewed. So yeah, uh, let's dive- Okay, well actually, I feel like this is a little too crammed for what I want to do here. Everything might fall if I touch it, so let's move to a safer location. That's better. Uh, so basically, right, uh, for me to consider my collection a library, I'm supposed to, according to Google, have 1,000 manga or books. So I have no idea how many manga I have back here, but it's quite a few. <laughs> So I'm going to be keeping a rolling tally on how many manga copies I have as I go through each individual series. Uh, so yeah, let's kick things off with... Last time on Dragon Ball Z. For the uninitiated, this is Dragon Ball. <laughs> and it's... In terms of volumes, I think there's like 90 volumes here. I counted before this, I think it's, it's 90? Yes. Yeah, okay, it's 90. There's 90 volumes here of different descriptions, whether it be the colored manga, the Viz Bigs, you got the re-release with new modern art, I say modern art of Akira Toriyama, you got some collector books and all that kind of stuff, you got some classic copies of Dragon Ball Super. Uh, I have all of them, all of Dragon Ball, yeah, they're over here, all the Dragon Ball Super. I think it also happens to be my very first mangas here. Can you tell which one of these are my first ones? They're like all sun bleached. And they were some of the first manga I ever read in my life. So yeah, this is where it all started, humble beginnings. But I think maybe the most interesting part of my entire collection is actually in this. And they come with these. Now this is sort of unconventional. So I decided to one day see if I could purchase a copy of Shonen Jump from the 1980s. And in these copies of Shonen Jump, you actually get to see the original release of, I think, Goku versus Vegeta, literally the very first time they ever fought. And it's like really big too. It's kind of cool. But yeah, I have uh, the diff different parts of that fight just all collected. I hope to one day have all of them collected. I think that'd be pretty cool. Cut all this stuff. <laughs> That's Dragon Ball. That's 90 so far. Strong start, right? Next! Assassination Classroom. This is a typical case of uh, judging a book by its cover. I just really like the, the cover of the very first volume. Like, can it, never pick the bottom, guys. Never pick them. The foot. Yeah, I just like the cover. It's just really simple. And I heard someone describe a scene from it and it sounded interesting. I haven't read it. Now, normally with these reviews or normally with this channel, I collect the manga that either I am currently reading or will read in the future. So this is an example of the latter. I'm probably going to end up reviewing this at some stage, but I don't know. Do you guys want me to read Assassination Classroom? Comment down below if you do. I heard it's supposed to be pretty good. So yeah, Assassination Classroom. IQ is an example of a series that is quite long that is also very difficult to uh, to collect. I think I'm missing a few volume. Yeah, I'm missing volumes ten. Uh, there are other sports manga that you'll see in this in this video that I have, but I just don't have all of it. Now I do want to again read uh, Haikyuu. I've never read it, but I have watched the first couple of episodes and I really like the idea behind the series. Um, but it, as sports manga go, I'm, I'm not a huge aficionado. I don't read a lot of sports manga, but I want to get into it. So is Haikyuu good? Yes. Hunter Hunter is a great series. Uh, yeah, so this is one of the mangas that I actually bought specifically for the purposes of a review, and that review is out. So if you want to watch that review, uh, link in 
somewhere on my channel. Watch it there. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, Hunter Hunter was just one of those stories that like I knew about for a very long time, and I really wanted to check it out, and I, I found the perfect excuse to when I started reviewing other series than Dragon Ball. So with Hunter Hunter, you have a story written by a guy that feels like it devolves into madness towards the end. And some people love that, some people don't like it, most people do. Um, I thought it was a little dark, but it's dark in a really good way. Check it out, I highly recommend it. Yeah, but first a quick word from our sponsor. The holidays are finally upon us, and with that comes the stress of what to buy our loved ones. Thankfully, Raycon are the way to go. I love to use mine for listening to podcasts while working, but they're just as great for exercising and walking your dogs. That versatility is why everyone needs Raycon, and they're a wonderful option for this gift-giving season. Regardless of whether you pick up their earbuds, headphones, or speakers, they offer premium sound, useful features, and an almost custom comfortable fit. Best of all, some offerings have up to 54 hours of battery life. While they sound fantastic, what really makes them attractive this season is their price. At half the price of other premium audio brands, they're a fantastic option for those looking to save money. If you've got a bunch of people to buy for, Raycon's holiday bundles are great and offer 30% off. The Stay Fit bundles got everything you need for those who love to work out at home and out and about. So click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com forward slash not mark and use code EARLYBF to get 20% off site-wide or save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. There will also be different deals coming throughout the season and I'll try to keep the description box updated with the latest offers. But just so you know, you can always go to buyraycon.com forward slash not mark to get the best deals available on Raycon. Okay, this video is like way more uh, physically demanding than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I built this really nice set. Do you like it? I like it. Um, so, uh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh, uh, very quickly, in case you guys wanted to request something like Gintama or Hajime no Ippo, while I would love to cover series like this, at the moment these stories aren't licensed in English and so don't have an official English manga release. As a general rule of thumb, my channel doesn't review or cover material that needs to be obtained illegally to digest. Now, this obviously isn't to discredit fan translations as they're very talented. I'm just trying to navigate a legal minefield. Okay, back to the video. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is. Weirdly genius. <laughs> so, like, oh, it's upside down. <laughs> that was embarrassing. Uh, Araki is like one of those mangaka that doesn't feel like a mangaka, if that makes any sense. Now, from my experience going through uh, different reviews, I like to delve into the person behind each manga. And with Araki, this was kind of interesting because he actually wrote his own book on how to write manga, or at least how he learned to write manga. And it was kind of illuminating because I was able to, like, you know, appreciate the artistry and the story behind Jojo's Bizarre Adventure when I was reviewing it a little better because I could sort of see him talking about that very experience. Um, now, I went into Jojo's Bizarre Adventure with a sort of less than reverence uh, concerning the actual material because I actually came into it via the anime, which I didn't so much enjoy. But when I picked up the manga, I honestly, God, thought it was a much better experience. Uh, like, the artwork in this is actually insanely good. Even from the get-go, but it, it, like, it gets that much better as it goes on. Um, when it comes to different stories, I liked the idea of part three a lot. Um, and it was way more fun than I thought it was going to be. Joseph is my favorite Joe star. I don't think this is the full collection now. When I bought it, all of this was out and there wasn't any more, but I think there's more out now, so I'll probably add to this collection. Uh, where are we are, where are we at now uh, with the tally editor? Oh. Next. This is a series that is in the running for the best manga of all time. You know what, actually, I'm gonna say it. It's the best manga of all time. And not even from a literary standpoint, okay? Berserk, 10 out of 10. When the series came to volume 41, 
Uh, they made a special release for it in commemoration of Kintaro Miura, so I decided to pick that one up. So this is probably out there as one of my favorite purchases in my collection. Um, it's volume 41, and yeah, RIP. Akira! When it comes to displaying my manga, I don't normally keep them inside these boxes. Shows like Dragon Ball, um, One Piece, you'll see later, uh, Naruto, Bleach. These are all series that come inside boxes and most of them I don't keep them in the box for display purposes. Akira I picked up ages ago. I still haven't read it, but I will always display it in this box because look how cool it is. Oh! That should be illegal. Okay, so look. The actual books inside there look really pretty. Look how, look how pretty, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Apparently the, uh, the movie itself cuts out this middle part of it, which is like most of the story. So I'm interested in actually reading this one day and doing it alongside a movie review for the series because it's up there like Berserk as like one of the granddaddies of manga in general. So I'm actually really excited to read this one day. So yeah, hope it's good. Keijo. Studio Ghibli is a weird one for me uh, because I grew up with a lot of these films and the first real uh, production from Japan that I saw as like a feature film that was worthy of getting uh, some sort of notoriety or award in the West was Spirited Away. Um, but it's very difficult to review those stories on YouTube for copyright purposes. So I, I, I really want to, I have a lot to say about Studio Ghibli. And one of the actual stories from Studio Ghibli that I would be very interested in reading would be uh, Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind. Um, that's because Hayao Miyazaki actually went out of his way to write a very substantial manga concerning the actual story in the film. I don't know if there's more material in this, uh, similar to how there was more material in Akira's original version that was omitted from the film. Maybe, maybe that is the case, but I'd be very interested to see Hayao Miyazaki's take on the manga genre and how he would approach it. Uh, Princess Mononosuke, uh, that's just one of those, you know, it's an art book. I love it. I love that film. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, I want to get some more Studio Ghibli stuff, but this is just sort of the beginning. I'm not going to show you what this one is. Earlier this year, I started collecting a series because um, it was a big part of my childhood and there were some... Um, not so great news that came from it, but I've been trying to collect it for a very long time um, and really what's holding me back is how fucking hard it is to get into these packages. No, it's really hard. It's really... Fuck! It's a really knife. I got it. Um, it's Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh was like one of the first franchises I ever was able to engage with with friends. Outside of Pokemon and Digimon, it's sort of in that same ballpark. And um, I really want to re review this one day. I just don't have enough of it. It's really hard to get nowadays. I'm not sure if they're in print anymore, but uh, yeah. If uh, anyone out there knows where I can get some of these in English, preferably, um, yeah, hit me up, let me know. Have you ever read a manga that before you read it sort of came with like this um, socially imposed warning label? <laughs> Good Night Pun Pun is a manga that I have been told to, and I quote, not read because it would give me depression. Um, I don't know how true that is, but uh, I read, I want to say, the first five chapters of it, and then had to move on with work. Uh, I don't actually read a lot of manga in my spare time, believe it or not, anymore. It's just sort of become my job now. But uh, yeah, it is a really weird story. Um, it's given me the impression that it gets 
even weirder and maybe even very dark. Uh, so yeah, this would be maybe an interesting one to do a short video on for Halloween next year. I don't know, maybe something like that. By far, one of the most consistently requested stories for me to review, Pokemon Adventures. I don't know. I've never read it. Uh, I looked at a few pages from it. It's not the story from the anime, or I, I'm, it might be from the games. Uh, the Pokemon, you can see them in the balls, and it looks like they're going off of very old designs. Um, so, maybe? <laughs> I... If you guys want me to read it, I mean, fuck, I, I'll read it, but, uh, it's, it's always difficult to review stories that don't have, like, a companion anime for which to, uh, cut to for, you know, context for you guys. Making, uh, videos using only manga imagery is extremely taxing, and, you know, it's not really that interesting to look at, at least not without tremendous effort from editor stand, so, yeah. Pokemon Adventures, uh, I don't know if it's good or not, but judging by the amount of people asking me to review it, it might be pretty good. Yes. This is a Full Metal Alchemist. Now, I have a couple of other volumes that come with this, but they're kind of in the miscellaneous category. But in the category of Full Metal Alchemist, this is my full collection. Um, I have the entire series, it's, ready, it's waiting and ready to go. Did it win some award recently where it got like best manga overall or something like that? Um, yeah, I've never read anything by the mangaka herself that drew this and wrote it, but yeah, it's up there consistently as one of the best of all time. So I'd be interested to see it because I've only seen... I saw the anime, but there's two anime. It was the first one. I saw it up until that episode with the Chimera child monster thing. The bird monster. Th Is that the wrong show? I've seen very little of it. I know the two main characters, the kid in the giant suit of armor and the brother. I don't know their names. Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> Slam Dunk. Getting the full collection of Slam Dunk is like throwing 50 consecutive shots from half court and swishing them all because I have, and I kid you not, tried for over a year and a half to find volume, volume 19. <laughs> volume 19 doesn't exist on planet Earth for a reasonable amount of money. And I refuse to start this series without volume 19. What happens in volume 19? Is it amazing? It must be, because it doesn't exist on fucking planet Earth anymore. Slam dunk. Makoto Shinkai. Um, I don't know why I have a silent voice in here with Makoto Shinkai. Uh, I think it might be because, uh, a silent, didn't the silent voice come out like right before or after your name? And it, there was like the big conversation online about like, oh, this is better and that's worse and I love Mitsuha. That's a really great story. But apparently the manga is different. So I just had to buy the manga. Um, and there's two versions of it. There's like this really thick one down here and there's this collection up here. Um, outside of that, Makoto Shinkai. Makoto Shinkai is not the person that wrote uh, a silent voice. Let that be completely clear here. But it's in that same area for me. Outside of that story, A Silent Voice, Makoto Shinkai has written a bunch of different stories and there are some light novels in here, there's some uh, manga versions of Your Name, um, A Garden of Words, um, Weathering With You actually. A little peek behind the curtain. The movie Your Name has a massive significance in my life and I have to at some point make a video for it. I, I have to. If I never make a video about your name, that movie, that animated masterpiece, I have failed. So don't let me forget about that. Review on your name absolutely has to come and I'll probably cry. Okay.
Death Note's good! Read Death Note. <laughs> Punch Man. Oh, it's gotta be one of my favorite manga. Following season one, I bought as much of the series as I possibly could. I didn't read ahead because I, like I'm sure many of you out there, were waiting for season two. And I ended up waiting for way too long and I forgot about the series. I ended up watching eventually season two when it did come out. I thought it was okay. The best thing about that, right? Everyone talked about that season as like, oh, it's not as good as season one because the animation isn't as good. Or whatever. That's right, okay? The animation isn't as good, but that's because the animation in season one is like maybe the best animated series of television ever. So with season two, what I liked about One Punch Man season two was how good I found the characters to be. And that's all back to the month. I really, and uh, I mean this, really want to review this series. I have not read past the Boros fight, which is the end of season one. So there's actually material in this that I have actually seen in anime that I haven't read in the manga yet. So everything after what's covered in the anime, I have no idea what comes. I'm very excited to see more from this story. Um, like legitimately, this is like one of the series I'm most excited to see in the future. So yeah, One Punch Man. Mob Psycho 100 is one of those shows that I decided not to watch because I was watching, uh, uh, <laughs> One Punch Man. Um, everyone says Mob Psycho is supposed to be really good, so I bought the manga in anticipation of one day reviewing it, and I haven't yet uh, done that, so, um, yeah, tell me to review this and I will. Yeah, Mob Psycho 100. <laughs> The eagle-eyed amongst you might be wondering, Mark, why do you have season, was it, box set one and box set one again? Um, I'm going to tell you the truth. I accidentally bought two and then made plans to release this in a video saying, oh yeah, if you could comment your name or whatever and uh, I'll give you the thing. But that sounded kind of cringe. So instead I just did the even worse thing and just kept it. Um, and now I can't return it. So yeah, uh, maybe when I review Thousand Year Blood War or something, I'll, yeah, I'll make a competition and yeah, whoever wins can take this home or whatever, yeah. All right, yeah, Bleach, uh, I reviewed it, it was really good. Um, it's not done yet, it's still ongoing. People really don't like Fullbring, and I don't get it. It's, for me at least, the best part of the story so far that I've read from the beginning to the end of Fullbring. Like, it's just, it's so up my alley. I understand why some people don't like it, but I don't understand the negativity and hatred some people have for it. it it's manga, it's chill out. <laughs> Bleach. Bakuman! Um, it's a manga about making manga. I read the first volume. See, I don't ever have enough time to read the entire series. I kind of, I read the first volume and I'm like, oh, I'll definitely make the review about this someday. But the dangerous thing about what I do is I'll conflate what I want to read, Bakuman, but I also need to review things that other people in the global zeitgeist will want to watch because that's how I make a living. There's a timing aspect to it. I might review One Punch Man um, next year, but that doesn't mean that I didn't want to review it last year. It's just I have to review it when it makes sense to review it because that's when people are going to be looking it up. I don't know how I'm going to review Bakuman in the future, Bakuman's like one of those manga in my collection that could be trapped in the Shadow Realm forever. Um, unless it gets a re-release or there's some hype surrounding it that might come about. Who knows? Um, but yeah, Bakuman would like to review this. I don't know how I can in the future. But yeah. Jujutsu Kaisen! When I say that this manga makes me feel old, I mean it. So, I have become, with regards this particular story, the guy that has no idea what the fuck Jujutsu Kaisen is. Because my job requires me to always be working, to always be making stuff, I've never gotten around to enjoy anything in the last three years, apart from like some stuff that I had already known about or seen, like Attack on Titan or whatever. So Jujutsu Kaisen has arrived, established itself, and become one of the biggest and most highest selling manga of all time. All the while, I have no idea what it's about. 
Is it a punch kick manga? I, I, jujitsu cut it. Boobs. I might review it. Gotta give myself to you. Yeah, we're flying on the freeway at night. I only got Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man. All right. Chainsaw Man. So this Chainsaw fellow is uh, taking the world by storm right now. And just as well. Earlier this year, I wrote a review on Chainsaw Man. And it is just as good as everyone says it is. At least I think so. Um, it's got a really interesting art style, a really refreshing spin on the comedic aspects of uh, the shonen genre, if you could even call it that. It's sort of an, an evolution of shonen, if you will. So it's a very cool concept for a story. It deals with some really interesting themes and it does achieve... Actually, if someone in uh, the comment section ever doesn't like a video of mine, they'll say something like, You've never addressed the themes of the, sh of the story, and like... You're right. I never addressed this specific theme of this story that you like, and you think that's the reason why I didn't like it. That is not true. Themes on their own are just ideas. And depending on the context the idea is presented in, it could be good and it could be bad. So, for example, Avatar, The Last Airbender, the movie, has themes of coming of age, taking responsibility, friendship, all that jazz. These, I think you might agree, are good themes. But the movie's dog shit. So look, fair enough if you disagree with my review, but can we please stop saying that I don't understand the themes of the thing? The theme of a show doesn't make the show good. The story does. All right, rant over. Yeah, uh, so this is Chainsaw Man. <laughs> and Fire Punch. I haven't read Fire Punch. People say Fire Punch is good. Um, but yeah, Chainsaw Man. Highly recommend it. Watch it. Read it. Put it in your face. Makima. Attack on Titan is, I'm going to say it, a brilliant manga. Because even if you don't like the ending, I personally liked the original ending that, that was there. Um, I haven't seen the revised ending. There was like a half chapter or like special chapter to like, you know, bookend the whole series. And I never read that. So I don't know how it uh, progresses after that fact. But yeah, Attack on Titan is like one of those series that like, it's all about the journey, not the destination. It's delivered for me, I think, some of the highest highs I've ever experienced when reading a story. I've never been so physically involved and excited when reading a story so feverishly turning pages just to see how this impossible scenario will resolve itself with our heroes coming out on top. It is insanely well written and I really love it. And it's for that reason I wrote an almost three hour long review that I uploaded and don't get paid for because the last three minutes of the video is a cover of a song that's used in that series and they get all the money. But I didn't take it down because I'm that proud of that video. That is easily the best video I've ever written and it, it the view and the views reflect that. So if you haven't seen that video and do like Attack on Titan, check it out. One thing I will say though, the Colossal Edition is bullshit. Not because uh, I don't like reading big versions of things. I actually prefer it. All of the shit that I have here would be big if I could get it, but they always like, like it's always this like bullshit small stuff, right? I, I, I get it. It's easier to produce. It's more cost effective. I get it. But Jesus, this is awful, okay? I haven't touched this yet. I haven't opened so much as a single page, but already it's like scuffed along the edges. Whatever the opposite of the berserk leather bound mammoth pieces were, this is that. This is trash. Trash. Great story. Trash binding. Attack on Titan. <laughs> Pluto, 20th century boys, monster. Urasawa. Come on, Urasawa, like this. This is one of the most highly respected manga authors of all time. And I've read one of these series, Pluto. 
It is such an interesting, different, and exciting way of writing and drawing stories. I can clearly see a lot of like modern day inspiration uh, coming from this. I, much like how I feel about Bakuman, really would love to review some of these stories at some point, but I just don't know if that time will ever come, if it has that same mainstream appeal that other uh, shows have, like Jujutsu Kaisen, which I'm not against reviewing, but um, I would very much like to see more of something like this out in the global zeitgeist. Um, and who knows, maybe I'll make it anyway, but it would be more beneficial, at least an easier decision to make if uh, more people knew, knew about this author and um, knew about this artist, so yeah. Demon Slayer! Uh, same situation as Jujutsu Kaisen, a show that sort of showed up, blew up, and I don't know anything about. Being who I am with respect to Demon Slayer, um, as a person who lives in planet Earth, is sort of like a nuclear explosion going off next door and you being oblivious to it. I don't know what this story is, but everyone seems to love it. So. If you would want me to read Demon Slayer and maybe review it someday, let me know, because uh, Fred... Demon Slayer. <laughs> okay, my sweet little TNM nuggets were almost there. Only a few more series left, and one of them is Parasite. <coughs> Parasite's good. I really liked Parasite. I really liked the anime. I've never read the manga, but I've only ever opened it once or twice. Um, if I ha have seen the series, um, don't really intend on reviewing it. Whenever I watch something that I really, really like, especially nowadays with the industry that I'm in and that I'm trying to get into, I really want to support the official release in every capacity that I can. I hope that's evident by the sheer volume of manga that I have. No pun intended. The amount of manga that I have is directly proportional to like the amount of support that I want to give the artists and the companies that supply us with this stuff. Because I genuinely do want to pay for it and I don't want to do wrong by them. Parasite is such an example. I loved the anime in this. Um, opening up the manga, the artwork seems kind of hit or miss, and I'm not sure how that would uh, impact me if I was to read the entire series. I've only read a chapter or two, and really it was just to kind of get a taste of what it's like. The paneling seems quite boxy, if I can, if I remember correctly. Um, it, it just seems kind of flat. Now, uh, that might be a bad example here, but the artwork seems much more engaging in the anime. But the story itself plays with some kind of cool philosophical ideas and, you know, some horror. It's pretty good. I recommend, definitely recommend watching the series, um, but if you want to pick up the manga, do it. Uh, it's really good. Spy X Family. <laughs> Everyone seems to like this. Um, I haven't seen it. Shock horror. I don't watch TV apparently is uh, what I'm sure most of you are saying right now. Um, so yeah, Spy X Family looks cool, looks interesting. I read the first chapter, um, I think when it came out, actually. But uh, yeah, Spy X Family, very good. I'll read it if you guys want me to. Don't let this fool you. A collection of My Hero Academia with this many repeat editions implies that I'm a massive fan of the series. I watched the anime and really liked it. I have not read a single chapter of the manga. I stopped watching the anime. Fuck it, what chapter? What's the corresponding Whatever the fucking episode was about Lemillion. Yeah, if you, the, yeah, the Lemillion episode, the one that was like really good. And um, yeah, I stopped watching there because I was like, okay, I have to review this series someday. And I think it might be better if I don't actually know what's going to happen after this. So yeah, I have watched up until that point, whatever that is in the manga, yeah. So maybe someday I'll review um, My Hero Academia. I think it does the hero's journey really well, and it does a lot of core things that make Shonen Jump really endearing and fun, extremely well. So yeah, My Hero Academia. Junji Ito. So the Junji Ito collection is a series of short stories written by the author Junji Ito himself. He's a manga artist that specializes in horror fiction, and uh, I haven't read a single uh, chapter of his material, and that's by design. There's a fantastic video uh, written about Junji Ito and his stories by Super Eyepatch Wolf. If you haven't seen it, check it out, it's fantastic. But pretty much, 
off the back of watching that video, I went on to Amazon where I get most of this stuff and I just bought everything from Junji Ito in the hopes that someday on a Halloween or some corresponding holiday that might make or make befitting to review it, I would review the like some stories from it because I think there's something genuinely interesting about his approach to horror that uh, at least was conveyed in that video by Super Eyepatch Wolf and I hope to get some raw impressions out of these books at some point because they look fantastic. So yeah, Junji Ito. Everything I know about story that I've used in my reviews, that I've used anywhere that I appear online, have either come from my own lived experiences, have come from uh, videos that I have watched myself on YouTube, or they are contained in the books that you see here today. I've read all of these. Some of these are art books where I like to study a bit of, you know, how to draw different shapes and body types. Um, everything from the physical of the musculature all the way to even like how how, how fat is distributed like I mean it's all, all, all of this is really interesting um, there's the animators handbook there's uh, paneling and composition in Western comics there's Hayao Miyazaki's book turning point there's another version that there's another part to that series that I haven't read yet but I absolutely will get around to there's some art books again as I said but the best ones I think, and the ones that I think have paid dividends for me personally, are these books: um, "Story" by Robert McKee. Um, if you're into so, if, if you're into like reviewing material and want to get better at it, um, Robert McKee has some very good books on it. Specifically, this one, and yeah, it's like you know, it just goes into pretty much everything you need to know um, in detail. But this is more of an advanced one. If you want more of an entry level one, um, creating character arcs by. Uh, K.M. Wyland, uh, it's a super easy read. It's Baba's first character arc understanding thing, and it makes everything sound so much more simplified and easy to understand. Um, so yeah, creating character arcs. Um, there's the art of dramatic writing. Um, this is a bit more um, involved. I haven't used it as much, but I have used it, and it's given me a lot of insight into different things. Um, John Truby, The Anatomy of Story. For those of you out there that might think that title, The Anatomy of Story, sounds familiar, um, I have a series on my channel called The Anatomy of Anime, and it's actually inspired by this very book. Um, I learned a lot from this book. It's a great book, and again, like all the other ones here, can teach you a lot about how to write a good story and what goes into making a good story. And then finally, there's John York, Into the Woods. Again, it's again focuses on more dramatic stuff and breaks down difficult to understand concepts into easy to understand frameworks. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in getting into storytelling, I couldn't recommend these ones more. Naruto is... I'm going to share a little bit of like behind the curtain aspects on my channel. There are elements of shonen that I really like and there are really famous stories from shonen history that are famous and are held in a, such a high regard regarding nostalgia. Um, and normally, there is a discrepancy between the quality versus, um, you know, how people are claiming the series to be. Naruto was one of the series, one of the few series that I've actually revisited that is as good as people are claiming it to be, I think. Um, I think there's a really interesting uh, aspect of the story that's sort of explored with the likes of Naruto specifically being sort of an analog for um, being sort of analog for Kishimoto himself. Uh, I touched on that in the first video I made on Naruto, but yeah, overall Naruto is like a really great series. It's really endearing. The first, the, the main character, importantly so, because the series is titled Naruto, uh, he's fantastic. He's really good, and the series itself has a lot of personality that I really enjoyed. It loses itself in places. Um, it has some questionable ideas, um, but I think it overall sticks the landing, and I, you know, I found it very fun. Oh yeah, there's like some miscellaneous stuff here that I'm not going to really include in this video properly, but there's like Blue Exorcist, a, a single edition of that. There's Dead Man Wonderland. These are all copies of like manga like I bought right before hopping on a plane just so I didn't have to like twiddle my thumbs and just do whatever. I've got a few, uh, what's this? The... Is it... what is it? Oh, it's a light novel, okay. Um, yeah, and I also, uh, I, I have accidentally in the past purchased French editions of Death Note, so, um, Omelette de Fromage, I can't speak French. Also, this just came in the post. Blame. So, add one to the tally.
One Piece. Um, in a hundred pieces. There are 100 volumes of One Piece right here, and let me tell you, um, as a creator, going in to review One Piece, it was sort of, sort of nerve-wracking, because it was the first series I actually delved into properly where I was exploring something other than Dragon Ball for a long period of time. Um, it was fortunate for me that it worked out, but I think more so it was that I was really worried that I wasn't going to uh, receive the series in my mind as people wanted me to. And I know that shouldn't be a concern, but it is always when you're a creator, and that's why it's kind of difficult to hear it when people are saying things like, oh, you don't understand it, all that kind of stuff, because genuinely, when I make a review, I'm trying to be as honest and good faith in my interpretation of the material as I possibly can be. One Piece was amazing from the start, and continued to be so all the way throughout. If there's any series out of this entire collection of mine that I've shown today that I would recommend for you, um, there's two properties, Berserk and One Piece. Those are incredible stories. Um, they need to be seen and experienced in order to be believed. The One Piece is real. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Um, if you would like to leave a comment down below on which of these series you would like me to review in the future, please do that. Um, I'll be checking the comments. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. See you all next time. Mark. <laughs>